this government startup is not like so common thing in Estonia either. Uh, it started uh, 1st of September, one and a half years ago actually, when uh, the business idea competition of uh, what is the best business idea in Estonia, um, then there was submitted this 10 million Estonian idea and it won. Our Tavi Kotka, our government CIO, proposed the idea. Let's uh, let's have ten times as many e-citizens as we have citizens, and uh, it got attention. And uh, they go, uh, they won scholarship, and they gave that scholarship to me, so I quit the job and started to run this. Uh, at that point of time, it was just literally in the Minister of Economics Affairs basement, uh, me and the laptop, and uh, trying to think why do we should do it and to whom it is, and. Uh, and if you start doing this, it's like any other startup in a sense. Uh, you try to validate the market, the customers, the problem. So you do some launch page. So we made also launch page and within first day, so next day when I woke up, I, I checked the statistics and there were over 4,000 people who wanted to become E-Estonians from 150 different countries. So it were the mouth spread everywhere from the day, same day. and. Uh, it, it was a huge positive surprise. Uh, I didn't have any idea why any, everybody would like to become Estonians. And uh, <laughs> we are getting there, <laughs> we're closer. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but it was fun and this really, this uh, external positive pressure uh, really helped us to actually change the laws, regulations also, uh, so that 1st of November the parliament accepted so that no one was against uh, to uh, start issuing EU residency. And this is like not normal in Estonia, also the opposition is not against, uh, but this time it happened that no against vote. It showed that, that there was something that people st really believed in. Uh, 1st of December, e-residence was accepted and first e-residence card was issued. And if you then asked government or member of parliament people the reasons, then uh, of course when we even didn't know, then, then actually it was still fuzzy like why we accepted exactly. We knew, of course, that it helps foreigners to be related to Estonian companies, to be the board members and digitally sign everything while you're there. So the background story is that E-Estonia is like actually 16, 17 years old in the sense that as far back as I remember my life, it's always been digital, you know. I only voted in my life digitally, I've never been in physical booths. I declare taxes only digitally, I digitally sign, I don't know how to sign on paper in the sense that we don't do that because it's like suspicious if you're like trying to sign things on paper, like like s you can change the contract eventually or you can, you know, you can change the date or whatever, so, and you cannot track who signed when and whether it's valid or whether you can sign or whether it's your signature in the first place, so it's very fuzzy and we don't use that in Estonia. So, and the residency was nothing more than opening the same gates to foreigners. And uh, and thereafter, it's really started to grow the uh, the attention of EU residents, and we had like official US delegation trip uh, back in December then, and uh, and there was my like feeling that first time when I realized that I'm not returning to the job I had, that this is grown much bigger than I ever expected. Wherever I was in the US, whether driving with Uber, taxi or restaurant, when you told that you're from Estonia, then they started speaking about the Estonia and the residents. And, and some of them said that there is a new country emerged uh, in Europe. Uh, some of them said that you can travel without visa to Europe. Everybody had their own theories behind what is EU residency. Most of them are wrong, um, but we still like that because people, it kind of put people's imagination in the world, like what is the new age country? Like what means technology country? Anyway, when we returned from US, uh, then we got mandate from our prime minister uh, to actually make it more serious business. We got the government mandate to format the team uh, and to have budget and to have some kind of saying in our policy making, like that we can actually do stuff. So I was elected as team lead then and 1st of April uh, I'm running a team of seven members. It's uh, And our first goal then was uh, <coughs> when we opened uh, foreign embassies and online application forms. So first you had to visit twice to Estonia to become e resident. Now you can apply online, choose your pick up location of the card and give fingerprints, identify yourself with passport, and then you can become an e-resident. And now there are 38 foreign embassies, yeah? Here in country and origin, like in Hague, in the Netherlands, for example, 
and pick up the card there. And the purpose there is that you have this face-to-face -face meeting. Government is recognizing who you are and giving you the card and pins. That's why every time now you're using the card to enter some system, we verify that this is you who you claim to be. And that's why you, it's very strongly identified. You can start using services. And it's really efficient. Once uh, there are 10 minutes, then yes. you're out, it's done. Mm. I figure you, if you can do it as a, as a country, you can also do it as a city. There's no reason why a city of Amsterdam won't do the same for his Definitely, and we can see the cities sometimes are getting more important than countries. Like, uh, but uh, why why it's good to do it in country-wise is that you still need access to the services which country offers. So when we come to businesses and opening uh, companies and everything, so there can be limitations if you are just acting with the uh, with the city. But eventually, in Estonia, it doesn't matter because the whole infrastructure, whole technical level, the whole legislation, uh, social level, everything is built up on the same platform, and cities can use the same way as private or public sector, and that makes it efficient. But you're, you're involved, uh, uh, the city is the issue, uh, the issue of passports, so it makes sense. Mm. If then, definitely, yeah, yeah it does. But uh, later today, I have uh, some. Uh, uh, discussion with uh, some government people of you and uh, there are actually you don't need to build the stuff yourself and that's why we come back to it later you can utilize e-residency platform so that every whoever wants for and they what they plan to do or they at least discuss it with me if you want to get visa to the Netherlands uh, you can become Estonian e-resident and apply through Estonian e-residency because we can give you all the passport information, background check and everything. And you don't need to build the system yourself, use the platform and, uh, and other countries can, uh, can use it also. So we can come back later, but this makes the world very interesting. Uh, and 2015, we, uh, we also launched App Store, which I'll come back later. So to show some statistics, uh, I can show you real, real time statistics, how we are actually doing then. And then I can come back why people become e residents. So basically here we launched uh, 38 foreign embassies and now we have approximately uh, two, 200 uh, applications per week. Uh, we see that the most popular e-residents are from Finland because of the existing business connections. Uh, every fifth e-resident is from Finland, this makes their business more convenient. Netherlands is 10, top 10, which is uh, uh, which is impressive number in the sense that you're not our direct neighbor and you're not so uh, big population. You have 261 e-residents of Estonia. 1% uh, of e-residents are rejected because of the background checks and everything. So and there are different data. This is very interesting data. <coughs> this shows how many companies have been established by e-residents, the yellow graph. Uh, January is usually not so high, but basically we are kind of in exponential growth when we see that uh, e-residents establish their own companies and start running them. And this is peak. This actually shows, and I'll give you the reasons. Um, most of these people, it's not only a matter of convenience that it's more convenient to run your company through Estonia, but it's actually many countries in the world you cannot run business today because you don't have access to, I don't know, payment providers, for example. You cannot sell stuff on internet because you cannot accept foreign currencies. You know, there are many regulations which stop you to do that. You cannot have those bank accounts, everything. Now you become e-resident, you open bank account, you establish company, you get payment provider, you get digital signature, and together with that, you can run your company location dependent wherever you are, uh, whoever you are. And this is powerful. And people are getting, getting to understand that. But you're not really registered in You are. You have you physical are. address. You, are, you have physical address. Yeah. Uh, taxes, e yeah. uh, taxes is a good question, uh, and this is the best part. Uh, E-residency doesn't mean tax residency. So the tax system is the same as without E-residency. Usually you pay taxes for whichever country you are from, or sorry, whichever country you are doing business at. So it, where you create value, there you pay taxes. And for example, if, uh, if there is Indian guy who establishes company through Estonia, gets bank account payment pro sell stuff, then basically he doesn't pay taxes to Estonia because he's doing business in India. Which means that India as a government gets, without any further investment, initial investment, just new money from entrepreneurs who bring their international money into their country. The entrepreneur, is, entrepreneur itself earns 
from new money. And what Estonia wins is that Estonian service providers, like banks, address providers, legal advisors, just can increase their market space. Instead of having one million end users, now they have the whole world and they can serve more customers, hence they get more revenues, hence they pay more taxes to Estonia. So Estonia wins through Estonian service providers. And this makes this win-win-win solution where other countries, like the Netherlands, want to implement and want to support e-residency because it increases entrepreneurship in their countries also. And that's why we want to like position ourselves in like different, like it's different world. Well, nowadays we know those tax heaven countries who offer you all those stuff. Then we want to turn this around and want to be as transparent as possible so that we are going to exchange data about your taxes, about your citizens automatically with other tax uh, agencies in other countries, which makes it very transparent and uh, avoids uh, money laundering companies and only gets those who actually want to pay and be like, be like good, good persons. Thirty-eight percent, thirty-seven percent of e-residents come to run location independent business. This means the example which I gave from about India that they actually don't want to be in Estonia or hire anyone perhaps here. They just use the card to access services to have this legit business, bank and everything. Twenty percent of e-residents actually hire someone in Estonia or have manufacturers or have some kind of activity there also. 16% of them are just fans. They don't want to use any services. They just hold this card, they share it with friends, make selfies, share the experience of new digital world, how it should be, and be part of that community. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But then you can still easily open a bank account. Yeah, if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the. Uh, mm. And uh, that's fine with us because. Uh, People like Ronald eventually are ambassadors of like yeah. years and they share the views and uh, and we like to support. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because there have been like many those really expensive Estonian like kind of marketing campaigns also which like is promoting Estonia now basically people promote themselves. It's like crowdfunded kind of marketing for Estonia, so that's why it's great. Anyway. Uh, don't want to stop here more. Lots of social media interaction. Uh, for example, everybody, someone again tweeted about becoming an e resident. Uh, yesterday, there was in Singapore the press event of how Singaporean people can open bank accounts while they're there also. Uh, tomorrow is in Berlin another event where I'm going. So it's starting to grow itself. Uh, people themselves are starting to like organize stuff, and, uh, and this is great. One of the last things uh, to share is that this, what I told you, this business environment, this can be seen as our kind of minimum viable product, our thing that we get new businesses. But what we are actually building, uh, we are building connections with different service providers. This slide I used uh, our last anniversary, uh, 1st of December, uh, where I announced six new partnerships with EU residency. And some of them are FinTech. Uh, let's take the most, I can't say much more officially. We are having a press release uh, next week actually, but at the moment I can say that we are working with Nasdaq and the future of how you deal with companies will be different because of EU residency. But next week there will be press release but there are like some crowdfunding sites like uh, fundwise which uh, is now today uh, actually developing service where you can do everything digitally if you fundraise money if you're investor uh, all the paperwork will be done digitally and all the investors can actually have access to the shares which they own and they can actually be part of this uh, business ecosystem including voting and everything else there are different, then there is ERES Network, this is a total new startup, it's community to e-residents, e-residents can chat with each other, share experiences, a ask advice. So there are different ways how companies can integrate e-residency. BitNation, for example, is a blockchain-based service where you can do e-notary deals. Before, it was like two random users who made deals. Now with e-residents integration, they can be sure that they know who they are with each other, and legally this is binding agreements 
because they have digital identities. So and this this makes it very very interesting. And the purpose and the goal is that we are building a marketplace here, digital identity marketplace. That uh, after some years, I hope there will be tens of thousands of applications on top of EU residency, and uh, and also other countries utilizing that. And as the Netherlands example, uh, you can actually as a government even build services on top of that. And for us, as in Estonia, it's not important that there would be Estonian services. It's important is that every person on planet would have the right and possibility to like use digital services the same way as we are using perhaps here and have the same rights to access them. And uh, and this makes this digital single world really possible if we have those digital identities. And one of the next big steps what we have is at the moment we have 38 foreign embassies. And uh, in less than half an hour, half an, <laughs> half an year, we are opening up uh, the whole world through visa centers, so you can become a resident everywhere you are. Uh, and this is a big step. Sorry, you said through visa centers? Yes. Visa centers, they are like private sector companies. You today have cooperation also with governments who offer you visas, because every government, including Estonia, don't want to expand their offices internationally, so they are using private sector help to actually issue cards, visas, uh, passports and everything. So and they are going to issue your residency cards. At the moment we are preparing public tender. So this is one example of visa center companies who have those locations, but if they win this public tender, then those will be the places. So in short, that's that's all. Uh, it's just, we are being beat a less than one year, so it's going to very early start. We have kind of validated the problem, how people internationally need to use this, our business environment. We have validated solution that this is useful for them even now, because it's still like, there are some bugs to fix, for example, to open bank account, you still need to travel to Estonia. So after five months, we are chasing that regulation that you can do online bank account also. So we are developing current regulations together with e-residents, which they tell us which direction to go. And we have like, quite strong will from politically also to actually make those things happen. So this is great. Thank you. Thank you.